What's going on, Facebook? Hope you're ready for another blessed day, man. I hope you understand that you have the ability to conquer this day, man. You know it's Marvelous Friday. The sun's still shining. Um, it's just still breath in your lungs. That's all that really matters, man. The Lord still has purpose for you, man. And you got to understand whatever the Lord has for you, you will achieve. But you have to go get it. You have to go out and do it. So whatever obstruction is going to come in your way, he will make a way out of no way. And, and you have to understand that because he gave you purpose long ago when you was in the womb, man. He, he gave you a purpose. He gave you some gifts that you could achieve that purpose with. But your purpose, nothing's going to stop your destiny. That's what I got to say right now is nothing's going to stop it. If it's in God's will, it's going to happen, man. So it's kind of like uh, jumping on a roller coaster. You know, you know that roller coaster is going to end at one point, but it's going to take you through a scary ride. But you just trust that that roller coaster is going to take you where it needs to go. You trust in God. You believe in God. You understand that he's in control. He's in charge. He's going to get you back to your final destination. I just want to remind you that, man. You know, today's actually uh, a happy yet harsh day for us, you know, four years ago. And I'm going to give you a little piece of my testimony real quick because uh, I noticed each one of us have a million dollar testimony. I say it all the time. People is like, yeah, you're not in this for money. But your million dollar testimony is more than money. We don't store treasures here on earth, man. They're stored up up above and you got to understand your testimony will reach people and I'm going to give you a testimony many of you know my testimony many of you heard my testimony but four years ago it was Easter Sunday man y'all could check the dates and you know make sure everything lines up but uh my dad opened his eyes on Easter Sunday so so that's my testimony I'm done no I'm joking but three days prior to that we got some crazy news on what you guys call what Good Friday, I guess, what everyone calls Good Friday, a day we're supposed to uh, uh, be recognizing what Jesus did for us, his punishment, his suffering that he took from us, those lashes on the back, you know, being nailed to the cross, you know, three days before the resurrection. And, you know, that day is the day I came to Jesus. Good Friday, uh, 2016, I came to Jesus. I, I broke down in my room and cried all night to him because we were told that day that my dad wasn't going to make it. See, my dad had been in a coma maybe about four days prior and he was fighting, but he, he was losing it. You know, my dad's liver was shot. His kidneys were going. His blood pressure was crazy. Everything was just all odds were against him. And I got to see God work, man. I really got to see God work. And it was a situation that, you know, I thought could never affect me because me and my dad never really had the best relationship as a youth. And when I say that, it's mainly me. It's mainly me because I realized later that my dad always loved me. See, I never see, I only got to see my dad two weeks in the, uh, two weeks during Christmas and two months during summertime. And at times that was too much for me growing up as a youth. It was too much, but two, two weeks in, uh, two weeks for Christmas wasn't fair to my dad. But that's what he was given, so he was going to take it. Two months in summer was never enough time, but that's all he got. So he, he was going he was going to utilize it. So he, it, I learned at that point when my dad was in a coma, that was about the point Jesus grabbed his bag of rocks, smacked me dead in the face, and let me see reality for the first time that, you know, a lot of it was my behalf. You know, a lot of it was, wasn't... The animosity that I had, the pride that I had, you know, uh, a lot of it was just different stuff and it was all within. And so that good Friday, when the doctors told us that my dad wasn't going to make it, basically told us it's today's the day we call the family because he won't make it through the night. That's what they said. My sister had broke down. It was crazy. And my sister was the one that kept us going because she was the one that believed. She she believed in God. She had beliefs. So when doctors would tell us, you know, 20 things wrong, she would find the one thing right. She'd be like, man, did you hear that? <laughs> like what? His his ammonia is down to 160. And if anyone knows ammonia in the body, we're only supposed to have about 70, 60. So 160 to me is high. And she would we'll, we'll be looking at her like she was crazy. And she would be like, ammonia in your body it, it was it was 210 when we got here it went down he's a fighter this and that and 
you know, it was crazy. So they finally, doctors finally broke her and she called me to tell me because I was on my way home to Salinas to pick up the kids. Had already been there about three or four days. And I was telling her, yeah, don't, don't worry, we'll be right back. I didn't make it back that night. My sister cried a good portion in her car that night before she went back to be with my dad, thinking that that might be his last night because that's what the doctors instilled in our head. I can I don't know if it was easier for me to be at home and let my dad pass away. I don't know what it was, but I didn't make it back. My wife was ready to go. The girls were ready to go. We were they were all ready to go, but I couldn't get back in that car. That night I prayed. And I prayed to God a lot. I prayed I came to God a lot as a youth, but I never knew God. I never knew who he was. I would pray to him, I'd get out of certain situations, and I'd be like, thank you, God, you know, give him the high five, and then keep on going the way I was going. But this time I started to pray, I started to cry. One thing I didn't do was sleep, because I knew where I needed to be, and it just seemed like somewhere that night, I got this peaceful feeling with me, that whatever happens, it's going to be okay, and I can't explain it to you. I can't explain that peaceful feeling to you, but I want each and every one of you to have this. Because when we went back, I remember when we got back there Saturday morning, like it was different. It was different. Matter of fact, we were out walking Fresno at one point, almost 12 o'clock at night, Saturday night, walking around at a donut shop in the like the worst part of Fresno. And I didn't even know. I wasn't worried about it because I could feel this hedge of protection, this peaceful feeling upon me and my family that I couldn't explain. And I thought it was just that I finally comprehend with death. I thought, you know, my dad's going to go. It's okay. I finally came to peace with it. But no, nah, because the following day, my father opened his eyes. The following day, the doctors that told us that he wasn't going to make it look like some liars because the doctors don't understand when, when, when they say something is impossible like they said it was impossible he would make it this God said I am possible so so after that point I had to see who God was I had to find God I started to search God and I started to search like never before because at first at first the first coming months it was just weird it was weird, and I started to realize that time after time, I turned my back on God and left him when I was broken and no one was there for me. He was still there. He would still pull me out of my muck. He would still be there for me. You know, the Proverbs, I believe it says, he's a friend that's closer than a brother. And that was true. The Prince of Peace, was it, it was true. So when I started searching for who God was, I kept on coming across Jesus. I kept on coming across Jesus. Kept on coming across Jesus. And I know people have different theologies about the Trinity and all this and that. But I kept on coming across Jesus and I kept on searching. And at one point, I just, I just asked him. I just asked him, what is it you want from me? You know, thank you for what you did, for what you, but what is it you want? And I can start to hear his voice. You see, the miracle didn't happen when my dad opened his eyes. And this is hard for me to say because that was a miracle. But that didn't happen when my dad opened his eyes. The miracle happened that night, that Friday night, because he turned a non-believer into a believer. And now I go preach the gospel any chance I get. Wherever I am, I carry this cross with me. Times are tough. Families are tough. And like I said, this is a beautiful story. But earlier last year, in a few months from now, I'll be one year, my dad passed away. And it was a hard time. But I carried that cross through with me. And I'm not going to lie. At the beginning, I was a little, I was a little upset with God. Because he didn't allow me to be in the room as my dad left. But I started to understand that each one of his promises were yes and amen. He still kept every single promise that he had ever made. And, and at one point, 
At one point, that peaceful feeling came across me while we were there. As I looked around and I seen the tears in everyone's eyes, I could feel his presence. I could feel my dad's presence. I could feel both of their presence right there in the room. And I knew each one of those promises were kept. See, I forgot what I was given because I was given three more years to build up my relationship with my dad, not to build it up, but rebuild it, rebuild it to something that would stand to a foundation that was stable. And it was the best three years because not only did it get me preaching this gospel, it got me to open my eyes with these spiritual eyes and look back at different events and realize that the Lord had never left nor forsake me, realize that he was ever always there for me, realize that he will never leave me. So I just wanted to give you guys that because whatever you're going through right now, whatever is going through, cry out to the Lord. I guarantee you, he will pull you out of your muck. See, time after time, I tried to do it myself. And I was good at putting on a fake smile amongst friends. I was good at, at living a lie. But now the truth that I live is so much better. It's so much peaceful. It, it, it's, there's a joy that no one could take away from me. And, and I want each and every one of you guys to have it. See, I can't explain it, but I could tell you where to find it. And I know someone out there is broken up right now. And they need to hear this. The Lord, the Lord speaks to me, and now I just listen. So I hope whoever you are, you take this, and today you break down, and you get on your knees, and you cry out to the Lord. Just ask him what he wants from you, and be willing to do it. You know, we started a discipleship group, and I'm going to actually take it to another level with a few guys. But I want those few guys to be ready to grow. See, when you come to the Lord, something has want to change for you. That, that four years ago when I came, something wanted to change. Something I was tired of living a lie. And as I started to grow and grow and grow... The Lord started putting certain people around me that needed to be around me. So now this table that I sit at with my brothers, man, this table is is crazy. And I'm going to invite a couple more people to this table. So I love y'all Facebook. I hope you have a blessed day. I hope you conquer this day. And I hope you understand that you have the ability to conquer this day. Because he who dwells in you is greater than he who dwells out in this world, man. So take him wherever you go and let him shine. I love y'all Facebook.